So in recent weeks in our podcast channel, we've been talking about some of the alumni of the Chicago Cougars of the WHA, uh, their uh, careers prior to and uh, later on after the uh, the franchise folded. But this uh, player was also a well-respected coach and an official in the OHL for a number of years, and it came to our uh, sad uh, news uh, uh, yesterday, December 4th, that he passed away. So today we're going to be talking about the hockey leg- legacy of the great Larry Mavite. Now, uh, his career in the OHL is quite long and extensive. I might do a, a second podcast uh, down the road, but I just want to concentrate on his dedication as a player for a number of uh, teams, and including in the IHL, WHL, and WHA. Now, uh, he was born in Woodstock, Ontario, May 26, 1942. Now, his minor hockey career included time with the Be- Belleville McFarlands of the OHA B League and the St. Catharines Teepees of the OHA. Now, the defenseman, 5'11", 185, first came to major prominence in his first uh, full minor pro season with the Toledo Blades in a 1964 campaign. Now, he had 20 points that year, 7 goals and 13 assists in 70 games with 133 uh, minutes and penalties. Now, we helped the Blades to the best record in the league, and in 13 playoff games, they had a goal and assist as the Blades won the Turner Cup. Now, from 64 to 67, he had started the year in 65 with the Syracuse Stars, an independent team, but then Mat- uh, Mavite returned to the IHL with the Port Euro Flags, earning 18 points, 4 goals and 14 assists in 23 games, and added assists in 7 playoff games. Now Mavite returned in 66, and one of his best seasons ever, he got 62 points in 69 games with the Flags, and entered, added 12 points in, uh, in the playoffs when the Flags won the Turner Cup. So that's his second IHL title. Now, following the season, Mavite was named the IHL's second All-Star team. In 67, he again improved his numbers with 73 points, including 25 goals in 75 games, and he won the Governor's Trophy as the best defenseman in the IHL, and was named to the league's first All-Star team. Now, despite this great season, for some reason, uh, due to some uh, poor goaltending, the Flags did not qualify for the playoffs. Now, 67-68 saw a big jump in his recognition when he joined the Vancouver Canucks, the original version of the Western Hockey League, where he recorded 25 points, including two goals, and a uh, 148 penalty minutes in 72 games. Unfortunately, for the second straight year, the Canucks did not make the playoffs. Now, Mavite uh, moved on to the Denver Spurs, the original version, not the WHA version, of the WHL. In the first season with the team, he had 33 points in in 74 games. And unfortunately, again, the squad didn't make the playoffs. Same thing happened in the next season, where he had a great year with uh, 57 points, including 10 goals in 72 games, but the Spurs didn't make the postseason. Now, he was named to the WHL second All-Star team uh, that campaign on 69-70. Now, he did return to Denver for the 71 season and finished second in team scoring with 63 points, including 18 goals. Uh, he played in 71 games, and the Spurs finally qualified for the playoffs and added four points in five playoff contests. Now, he was named to the WHL second All-Star team for the second consecutive season for 71. Now, 72, he joined the Salt Lake Golden Eagles and recorded 53 points, but for some reason, again, didn't make the playoff. So you're seeing a a pattern here. One of the best players on his team, but not enough to make their their squads uh, make the the playoffs. Now, in 1973, uh, it was a breakthrough year, year for him. Now, he finally made major pro hockey. And that year, in a very confusing turn of events, he played with L.A., Philadelphia, and the Chicago Cougars over 70, uh, uh, 73 uh, games. Uh, he had 10 goals that year, 40 assists for 50 points. Now, Chicago Cougars, neither three of the teams, he played in the playoffs with them. He scored his first goal of the year with the Sharks. Now, 74, he had a regular turn with the Cougars where he had 51 points in 77 games, and including 12 points in 18 playoff games, where the Cougars were in the midst of the postseason. Now, um, uh, the Cougars that year, a lot of upsets. They knocked off the defending league champion New England Whalers in the division semifinals. 
then uh, knocked off the heavily favored Toronto Toros in the division finals before losing to the Gordie Howe, Houston Arrows in the Avco Cup finals. Now, Mavite had 12 points again in those contests. Now, in 75, Mavite uh, earned 32 points in 57 games with the Cougars, including uh, 10 goals. Now, we did spend some time in the minors with the Long Island Cougars of the NEHO and uh, eventually was traded to his former nemesis, the Toronto Toros, before the end of the 74-75 season. Now, he played 17 games with the Toros, recording 9 points and helping them to the playoffs. Now, in six playoff games, the Mavite registered three assists as the Tor- Toros lost in the first round. Now, here where, where history repeats itself, ladies and gentlemen. Mavite split the 75-76 season between the Erie Blades of the NAHL, where he had 24 points, the Broom Dusters also of the NAHL, but finally made the WHA version of the Denver Spurs getting four points in 14 regular season games. Now, 76-77, he spent the majority of that campaign with the Dusters yet again, getting 67 points in 59 games. He also spent 10 games with Indy Racers, of the WHA with two goals and two assists. Now, with the Dusters in the playoffs, Mavite had 10 points in 10 games. Now, to the regret of a lot of people, he decided to retire from professional hockey. Now, he's full WHA totals, 248 games, 150 points, 37 goals, with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 WHA teams. So, he was in high demand. But to me, that career season in 74, 51 points in 77 games, Devastating on the power play, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I can say. Now, in the playoffs, he had 24 uh, games, 4 goals, 11 assists, and 15 points. Now, in the OHL, he became a highly respected coach with Belleville, Kingston Raiders, Frontenax, again the Belleville Bulls again, the Frontenax again, and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, a devastating career in the OHL. Now, Combining the 27 years he coached in the OHL, plus his time as an executive, plus the time that he was a minor hockey player all the way to major pro. Ladies and gentlemen, this guy, almost 70 years of dedication to hockey. Uh, t- a tremendous, tremendous individual, a great mind for hockey. Like I said, I'm, 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 I haven't decided I'm going to do something on his coaching career because I'll have to do a little bit more research because Mavite was very, very well known to the media back in the day, especially in Chicago. We have some followers on the podcast channel that uh, actually uh, tipped me off to his passing, and it was re- like with regret I'm doing the podcast today. I was planning a podcast on him, but like I said, in the, in the case of players of uh, in their 70s and 80s, former major pro, uh, you know, with COVID and the other diseases that are out there, you know, uh, things can happen quickly. Now, he did pass away in his beloved Kingston at the age of 78, so you know, surrounded by family and friends. So my condolences to uh, Larry's uh, friends, colleagues, family, all these followers. What a what a great legacy he, he left uh, for hockey. You know, uh, you look at the, the teams, you know, Toledo, Port Huron, uh, Vancouver, Salt Lake, some of the best minor hockey franchises out there. But, you know, it was, it was kind of bizarre, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of WHA players uh, had played with the original incarnations of the WHL and other squads that eventually took the names for the WHA franchises. And Larry was an example of, uh, of that. So uh, Larry's legacy will be uh, talked about uh, for uh, years to come. Uh, and I think what uh, what a lot of people need to remember that uh, he was tremendously dedicated to his teammates and the players he coached. He was always a very knocking on the door because if you look at statistics as a coach ladies and gentlemen he uh a lot of years he lost in the first round a lot of years he lost uh in the uh, second round but he was still dedicated and like i said belleville the bulls my god back in the day there was a lot of tragedies too very various incident uh, through the years and uh, you know he was strong for his players so ladies and gentlemen if you like what we're doing here give us a like comment and subscribe we uh we always appreciate uh, feedback and uh, be interesting to see next few days a lot of the Ontario networks how they're going to do uh, cover his, his passing because a lot of tape out there because he did tons of interviews with local stations local print outlets he was very good to the media and we're going to miss him have a good day bye